Welcome back, baseball fans. This is the Eliminating the Milwaukee Brewers video for the Carryover League this year. And, um, wow, what an improvement from last year. Uh, this team was a, had the fourth worst record. Now they finish at 500. And uh, not only that, because they finish in fourth place, they will most likely be drafting eighth this year, which is pretty high for a 500 team. But they would be the eighth or the, uh, the best fourth place team, I'm guessing. All sorts of improvement. Look at Marty Patton in the middle here. Um, he's 3-7, and seven, but in 92 innings, three complete games, and a 283 ERA. I just played three of those seven losses. They were all to Wilbur Wood in that series I just played. So he was, you know, pitching great for the year as the ace. Ken Sanders, another solid Ken Sanders year as a closer. There's a lot of promise on this team. I mean, even Bill Parsons was their worst starter with a 413 ERA. You know, great promise for this team. The sticks, Tommy Harper had 20 stolen bases, a 321 batting average. Um, you know, Briggs Hubley. They had 247 as a team. Wayne Comer really struggled. I don't understand why he hit 140, but that, that's terrible. Um, Jerry May really wasn't worth a platoon option. As you can tell so it's now time to take a peek at the Milwaukee Brewers and see who is leaving from 1969 for the Milwaukee Brewers so what we'll do is we will turn look at the backs of the cards where we see the years and we will get rid of all the 69 years that we find that should be of course eight 69 players leaving us with uh, 12 guys moving forward okay these guys are gone let's see who's coming back to the Milwaukee Brewers okay they're gonna bring back oh, they got the perfect split that I, I look for seven hitters and five pitchers which creates balance going into the draft uh, none is, you know, weighted too highly, hitting or pitching. Harper comes back, which is good. You have McNurtney, a nice catcher. Hegan at first. T-Ball was a decent second baseman. You have Fergosi at short. And Harper really should be a left fielder because of his defense instead of a third baseman. If he plays left, Savage is at center, and John Briggs is in right, or DH, that wouldn't be too bad. And the pitching talked about Marty Patton, Parsons, and Royce. That's the front and the back. You got your top three guys and you're back into your bullpen. So pretty even, easy sort of fill for the for these guys. Um, the question is how talented is the farm system moving forward in the early 70s for Milwaukee. We know Robin Yount's not going to be here for a little bit. And of course, the other guys, Gorman Thomas, Sixto Lescano, and, uh, you know, the later 70s, early 80s Brewers are a long way away. So how much improvement can the Milwaukee Brewers make with the eight guys who are leaving their deck? And that's what we're going to check out. Okay, time to plug in the players from 69 who are leaving. Let's start with Wayne Comer. Now some of these guys will, you'll, will be Seattle Pilots, some will be Milwaukee players. Comer had a, is a, has a really nice card in 69, but he had a disastrous year. Uh, nice uh, on base, 735 OPS and 69. Now after this, it looks like the guy will retire. Unless he has an exceptional split in 1970, which I doubt, uh, I would say it's time to you know let him go. Uh, not do the transition to Milwaukee or these other stat lines. So we're going to retire Wayne Comer there. Next player, Bobby Cox. Yes, the manager of... The Atlanta Braves, and he played for the Yankees for five minutes. There he is, Hall of Fame manager. But he is playing baseball this year. Look at that, there it is. So he retires. He only played in 68 and 69, and he has to retire. His career does not continue. Not a good start for the Brewers as they fill up the retiree holes immediately. All right. 
Next up, again, this is not could not be pretty because we have uh, some Seattle Pilot guys who don't make the trip to Milwaukee. Like I said, Steve Hubley is the next player. Had a nice year in 69 with the on-base percentage, some speed, some range. And uh, his as his career goes into 73, he's got some intriguing years. He's got a nice year in 72 with Kansas City. Worst case, he's trade bait. He's, he's keeper or waiver option here. Um, let's put him in the keeper because it's easier to take a guy who you want to keep and then move into waivers once you find guys better. So we'll start him there in the, in the keeper column at 10,000 units or tokens. Next player is Jerry May. Jerry May. Played from 64 to 73. Another pirate. A lot of pirate players distributed throughout Major League Baseball. It's a very talented farm system and developing players during that era. 69 Jerry May for the Pirates is the card you used, you saw in the in the series. Uh, so in 70, you know, the 71 Jerry May hits 252. The 70 Jerry May. This looks like a guy I would put on waivers since I already have Jerry McNerton. He's a good catcher. And the question is, you uh, you can only put guys on waivers who play in, that, in the first year. So I want to find out if there's a 1970 Stratomatic card for Jerry May. I'm going to go to Gary's Stratomatic resource page here at superds.tripod.com slash somrosters.html. It's an outstanding resource. This is a 70 reprint uh, card set I use. And I'm looking to see if there's a Jerry May on the Pirates in 1970 as a catcher. And the Pirates have Jerry May with Manny Sangi. And so his card exists, which means it's not a good card, so I'll put him on waivers. Jerry May at 100 units. All right, next up is Don Mincher. He should stick around. He's a slugger. Kind of one of those pull hitters who has a nice on base presenter. He would be a nice, he would be a, he would make a good Colorado Rocky actually. Now I think about it. He's a guy that could, could pound the ball. Uh, look at these years here 66, 67. Loses full time status, but he still has, uh, excuse me, plenty of home runs here. Those are doubles. These are, here's the home run column. So he was there all, the Seattle Pilot All Star in 1969. He doesn't go to Milwaukee. He ends up with Oakland in 1970. He has a similar kind of year. So he's he's definitely a keeper. Similar kind of performance we just saw, even though it was with Oakland. Um, and the, It would be in the Brewers' best interest to keep him away from Oakland and keep him as one of their own. Alright, Gene Braybender. I recall Braybender being the only Seattle pilot pitcher to throw on three days rest in 1969 for the pilots. You see he's got a Oriole, uh, came out of the Oriole organization, which is no surprise. Uh, he might have been on the 66 world champion Oriole team. If he, uh, interesting, at age 24, just four years older than Jim Palmer at that time. So there it is, 69 pilots. And in 1970 he gives it one more year, but he in Milwaukee for the Brewers, he doesn't pitch very well though. See the 602 ERA. The card's probably made, but I'm saying, you know what? It's time to retire the guy. Don't bring that bad card into the league. So they've got three retirees, so that will have to change before the draft. John Gilner. Like I said, I don't see much reinforcement help here for the Brewers, as expected not a good era they may have overachieved in that season they just had where they went 500 and they might go back downhill it's quite possible so Gellner had a nice I would call this a successful 69 the record doesn't show it but he has 331 ERA and a buck 18 whip outstanding year in 70 this is serviceable numbers here as a relief starter buck 31 92 innings they probably made his card in 1970 for Milwaukee but we'll check make sure same resource. Milwaukee Brewers looking to see if John Kellner's card exists. I'm pretty sure it should. It does. You might not be able to read the small text here, but I can see it. 
John Gellner will be a keeper. He might actually move into Braybender's spot in rotation. So Braybender was the number four starter. He's going to retire. Gellner might slide into the four spot. And lastly, John O'Donohue. How many O'Donohues are there? Look at that. There was one in 1993. But we're looking for this one. John O'Donohue. 6'4". Tall guy. Um, came up through Kansas City Athletics. His career ends by 71. So 69, he had a nice year for the Pilots. Quality lefty setup guy. 55 relief appearances, finished 14 games for him. That's pretty good. 2-2 two two record. 1970, he takes the trip, trip to, Mon to Milwaukee. Doesn't do very well. Then moves on to another expansion team, the Expos. Doesn't do very well either. Only 45 innings. We could take a peek here. He's left-handed. I mean, left-handed pitchers, even with, you know, are always useful. I would put him on waivers if they made his card. So the way to do this, I've got to check the Brewers and Montreal plus extra players to see if I got a 1970 John O'Donohue. Brewers and Expos. So here's the Brewers. I don't see O'Donohue there. Let's look at the extra players in the Brewers. No O'Donohue. Now I'm going to look at the Expos, which is here. No O'Donohue there. Checking the extra players for the Expos. No Donahue there. And lastly, I'm going to check the uh, errata where Stratomatic writes a note about extra nameless cards they add. See if he might be there by chance. And the answer, unfortunately, is no. They did not print his card. Sorry, John O'Donohue. We tried to continue your career. Stratomatic was not cooperating. And in 1971, he only pitched 17 innings. So this is the end of the John O'Donohue career. It was a good finish, though, in 69. So, the Brewers have some work to do before the draft. They've got to get on the phone. They've got to find a keeper is step one. And then, you know, move retired players into wavered lists. The problem is, you know, when you have four retirees, they cannot move into other boxes because they don't play anymore. So, they have to find a couple willing trade partners to take on some of the retired players. And the trade package could be draft picks, or it could be some of the current Milwaukee Brewer players you've seen, uh, like a Johnny Briggs, who uh, played for Philadelphia, or Steve Hubley, who played for Kansas City. You know, um, So, a lot of work for the Milwaukee Brewers to do in this era. Thanks for checking it out. We'll see you next time.